Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Veronica Johnson. I am the Outreach Director for Faith in Place. Grateful to be here with you tonight. Grateful that you joined us. Uh, we have a lot to share with you tonight, and I am one of three hosts. Um, again, your Outreach Director. I've been with Faith in Place all of seven weeks tomorrow. And uh, it's been a wonderful ride already and just grateful to be here with you tonight to share with you um, the many resources that we have to share with you um, and with your houses of worship. Also joining me as host tonight, Dan. Dan, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm uh, Dan Huncha. I'm the North and West Suburbs Outreach Director. Thank you. Dan will share with you tonight as well as Isioma. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Isioma, Energy and Climate Change Coordinator in Chicago. All right. We have um, a great agenda for you tonight. We will share with you our green team model, um, which is kind of the primary vehicle of Faith in Place to work with houses of worship. Um, the various program areas that we have um, the many resources that we have for your houses of worship to engage uh, in environmental justice and environmental um, disengaging environment altogether. And we will sum up at the end the various ways that you can get involved. So again, thank you for coming tonight. There will be a time for Q&A and there will be a few poll questions as we go through. So um, please be prepared to give us some feedback as we go along. Starting out, we will begin to share with you our green team model. Awesome. So the many images there are images of green teams and our staff engaging in different ways, um, areas of environmental justice. So what is a green team? A green team is three or more people in your house of worship um, who provide cooperative leadership to educate, connect, and advocate for healthier communities. So if you can imagine a team uh, within your house of worship of people who um, have some interest in these areas already, who can be kind of the leaders um, bringing matters of environmental justice and just caring for the earth uh, and engaging the earth um, to the forefront of your faith community. Um, so they come together, they set goals for your faith community, things that make sense for who you are and where you are, um, connect spiritual traditions with earth care and justice care, um, we believe that really regardless of the faith tradition, you're going to find some connection with your tradition and um, care of the earth and justice in general. And so we're excited to work with, um, with the multi-faith communities to uh, engage this work. Um, your green team plans activities to encourage sustainability and engage the wider community. Um, you might have something right uh, it, uh, applicable to your community, like simply uh, engaging in um, sustainability and building a garden and um, impacting waste and use of plastic. Um, our coaches will work with your green teams to help you meet some of those goals that maybe you've had even for a while. Uh, advocate for earth care policies. Uh, we will share with you and your, your green teams the different um, policies that we are um, sharing and, and supporting in our state 
um, and look for involvement in advocating for those policies. Measure ben benchmarks and celebrating success. It is always important to celebrate success. You know, it kind of counteracts that thought that as small matters don't matter, they actually do matter. Everything that we do matters. And so it's important to celebrate success along the way. It gives encouragement for those who this work is really important to that every um, success matters. And so we will work with your green teams even in celebrating success. So here are a few other images that gives you an idea of how to get your hands dirty as green teams. The first is one of our staff members, Samantha, um, who's there with an electric meter. Um, that kind of symbolizes that we do energy audits. We, we work with your houses of worship um, to um, audit the use of energy and ways to save energy throughout your facility. The second image is a garden. Um, and it is uh, a garden, I um, believe, of one of our houses of worship in Southern Illinois, um, where one of our coaches works with a green team to really build that garden and make sure that the produce is shared um, equitably in the community. And then the last is a house of worship, I believe, in the West Suburbs that I was collecting styrofoam for proper recycling um, and um, all that that does to care for our environment. So just some examples of ways to get your hand dirty. Um, our green team model includes a coach. You've heard me mention a green team coach. So here you see several of our coaches um, located regionally across the state, uh, Candace in Lake County, Dan in Northwest Suburbs, um, Cindy in Central Illinois, uh, Reverend Wade in Southern Illinois, and then myself and so many others who are working in the Chicago area. Um, and each of these folks um, you can connect with um, to either start a green team to learn more about um, how you can uh, engage a green team in your house of worship and the other resources that are available to you through Faith in Place. And so these are just some names and faces to give you an idea of um, the green team model and the coach that our coaches can work with you to answer your questions, to help form the team, to help the team get resources that they need to be successful for the work that your house of worship seeks to engage in. And so contact us. This link shown here can um, give you more information, step-by-step -step guide on how to start a green team. Uh, and we will share this link in the chat as well. Uh, and so if you are interested in starting one or even just want more information, um, we would love to speak with you about starting a green team. Again, it is our primary vehicle of working with people throughout the state, um, with houses of worship throughout the state to engage um, all that is happening um, regarding climate um, care and justice and earth care in this state. So we look forward to connecting with you with the possibility of starting a green team. And with that, I will hand it over to Isioma, who will share about our program areas. Isioma. So at Faith in Place, we have five program areas, energy, climate, sustainable food and land use, water preservation, advocacy, and youth empowerment. Under each program, we have even more programs that we offer. Um, for example, in our sustainable food and land use program, we have our migration and need program, um, which connects the migration story of the monarch butterfly to the great migration story of African Americans coming from the South to the North. Um, we provide things like nature outings and other exciting outdoor opportunities in that program as well. All of our programs are free and are available for your house of worship. Um, at your request, we can um, do one hour presentations on each program um, to give you more information about how you can get involved. Um, I will now hand it over to Caesar, our youth program coordinator, to talk a little bit about his awesome youth empowerment program. Caesar. Thanks, Isioma. Hey, everyone who's here today. Yeah, I would love to just give an introduction to the youth empowerment program. Um, Faith in Place runs the Eco Ambassador Program, which serves approximately 30 youth every year. We're both a summer and academic year program that helps youth um, get activated in their communities and fight for environmental justice, and also get introduced to the environmental um, 
environmental stewardship and conservation world. So we're here to talk more about resources for this program. There's two different types of resources in our Eco Ambassador program. There's an internal resource for the Eco Ambassadors and all of the youth participating in programming. And then there's community resources for those who, are, uh, who might be outside of direct participation within the program. Um, I would like to first start off internally um, youth get access to a Google Classroom where we share files, articles, and classroom materials with each other. Uh, this is our main resource where, where we're learning with, uh, especially in a virtual world. Uh, the second internal resource that we have um, are office hours. Uh, the youth get gain access to office hours with myself and Faith in Place staff uh, to help support their college applications. Uh, job, app, job opportunities, and also environmental action projects. And the last internal resource for Eco Ambassadors is the Alumni Network, which is hosted on LinkedIn, where youth can stay in contact with the Eco Ambassador Program and professionals at Faith in Place uh, for, their, for their professional and educational careers. So now let's talk about community resources. So if you're not exactly directly participating in the Eco Ambassador Program, there is still um, resources for parents and for youth who are interested, which includes the biggest resource is our youth newsletter. Um, every month we post a, a youth newsletter, which posts job opportunities. It shares more about our curriculum and our curricular progress and shares more information about local youth events. So I'll be dropping that newsletter in the chat if you're interested in keeping up of how we are running our program and what opportunities are associated with youth and environmental justice. And the uh, second community resource truly is, is my email. If you have any youth that are interested in joining the program and you um, have any parents who might have youth interested in joining the program, you can give them my email, have them send me an email uh, to talk more about the program or give me the name of their youth and contact information so that I can reach out to recruit their youth for the summer program coming up this year. Uh, so those are the resources for the Eco Ambassador Program. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the chat and I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, thank you and I'll pass it back to Sioma. Thank you, Caesar. At Faith in Place, we recognize the hurt, trauma, and damage caused by systemic racism. And over the last year, we have stayed committed to helping to provide the protective space needed to unpack these deeply rooted issues. And earlier this year, we started our first series of racial healing circles, and we are looking forward to continuing that work as it is an integral part of our organizational vision and our own, on our own personal missions. So racial healing circles allows us to mend relationships within our communities by laying the groundwork to help bring about social change. And in order to do the policy changing work required to make the transformation, we must acknowledge the wrongdoings that help form our broken system. So as we navigate this world, we stumble upon barriers and fractures that need to be healed in order to arrive at the same place. We hope that these circles give your house of worship or your green team the adequate tools to help facilitate more meaningful conversations in your personal lives. The journey for racial healing is a responsibility that belongs to all of us as stewards for the earth. So we're excited to continue this work um, in the coming year. If you head on over to our, our website at faithinplace.org, you will see our resource section provides a section to sign an anti-racist pledge. Um, there's also several articles on the intersection of race and environment and all of our justice, equity, and inclusion training tools are also located uh, in that section as well. We have less than a handful of pledges filled out on our website right now, so it is really important that you all head over there and sign up and pledge that you will be anti-racist, um, do anti-racist work within your community. Uh, yeah, and that can start with the racial healing circle. And all the links for this uh, will be in the chat. So if you are not aware, through our energy program, you could take steps right now to help save money on your energy bill by signing up for P-Time Savings or Alley Pricing uh, Program. 
Uh, those programs can be are through Comed and Amarin, although they're called something else, but they are the same programs um, if you're in the Amarin area. With these programs, you'll receive notifications on your phone when prices are surging. So you can shut off your uh, appliances and get a credit for you not using the energy during that time. And that credit will show up on your next energy bill cycle. You can sign up for this program through the Comet website or Amarin, um, and it's free, free to sign up. So participating in solar um, is also something we talk about in our energy program. And it means that you are playing an important role in helping the state meet its renewable energy goals. So Illinois Solar for All helps make solar installations more affordable for income eligible households and organizations through um, state incentives. Illinois Solar for All has programs for income eligible homeowners and renters, as well as nonprofit organizations and public facilities. Eligible participants will work directly with Illinois Solar for All approved vendors and good news is that these services have no or low upfront costs and guaranteed savings. Illinois Solar for All approved vendors must follow the program consumer protection guidelines so that everything is protected and, um, and safe. The Illinois Shine supports the development of new solar energy projects throughout Illinois. And if you don't qualify for Illinois Solar for All Low Income Program, you may still be eligible to qualify for Illinois Shine's program. You may participate in Illinois Shine's in two ways. You can either install it on your rooftop or your property, or you may participate as a subscriber to a community solar project, um, which uses a large centralized solar project for which you subscribe to a share point of its output. So whether you are planning to install solar on your property or subscribe to community solar, you must work with an approved vendor and we can get you connected with that. The program provides payments in exchange for 15 years of renewable energy credits called RECs from a utility contracted to buy the RECs from an approved vendor. These payments to your approved vendor will help offset the cost of your new PV system or your community solar subscription. This uh, picture is Silverwood Mennonite Church in Indiana. And these are the solars that they installed, which was made possible by, by a grant from Faith in Place. And we will talk more about those grants a little bit later. We will now take a moment to do a poll question. Are you interested in signing up for peak time savings hourly pricing um, program? Take the poll now. One second, it'll come up on your screen. All right. Oh, there it is. <laughs> can everyone see that? Okay, we can go ahead and take the poll now. All right, 90% said all of the above. 10% said hourly pricing. Thank you so much. And for those of you who are all of the above and hourly pricing, please head over and uh, to our website. You can also connect to Comrades website and sign up for those programs. All right. On our website, we have many toolkit curriculums that you can download right now to help facilitate some of our programming at your house of worship. We have our Just Eating curriculum, our Water curriculum, Migration and Me toolkit, Waste toolkits, a Congregational Support Agriculture toolkit, Composting 101 toolkit, a Pollinator toolkit, and Vegetable Garden toolkit. One of our most popular toolkits is our Waste toolkit, and lucky for us, we have our waste kit guru here, Christina, who will now talk a little bit about what you, you can expect from that toolkit. Tool Very good. Thank you, Isioma. Uh, I'm Christina Crost. I'm the policy coordinator uh, at Faith in Place. Uh, and I was previously an outreach uh, coordinator in Southern Illinois. And so during my time there, um, you know, I was asked all the time, well, what can we start on, you know, in our house of worship? Uh, as we get started with our green team, you know, what is it that we can be doing? What's an easy win? And that's something that we look for um, as green team coaches. We look for something easy to get us started, right? And so waste is really 
sometimes for some of us, um, a really quick and easy win um, in our house of worship. And so um, I wrote this waste toolkit as kind of a, not so much a step-by-step -step guide, and it's not even like a, a study or anything like that. It's more of a, a compilation of resources that you might use to get the conversation started at your house of worship. Um, so it starts by getting at the idea that we really just need to confront our consumption habits. Um, and that is an act of our faith. It's a spiritual discipline and it uh, applies to all faiths, uh, all uh, regions of the state. Um, it's something that we all need to really be more um, thoughtful about. So it goes through the three R's and then some. Most of us learned about reduce, reuse, recycle, uh, perhaps in school um, or have taught you know, young ones that, that as well. But we expand it to encompass more R's. Uh, rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose, uh, recycle, and rot. Uh, rot is like compost. Um, so all of those things uh, can be combined uh, in a waste program uh, at your house of worship. We start with a waste audit. So much like our energy use, sometimes we don't know the problems that uh, that we're trying to solve uh, until we actually look at what we're throwing away. And so um, there are directions in the waste toolkit to get you started with a waste audit. Uh, and I also want to bring your attention to at the very end uh, of the waste toolkit is a holiday appendix. A uh, holiday to encompass all of the different celebrations that all of the many faiths celebrate this time of year. Um, and so there is an appendix at the end that kind of tries to get us to think through and to think around, you know, how can we celebrate more sustainably? And speaking of celebrating more sustainably, I will put a link in the chat for our next, um, or for a webinar coming up in the middle of November, I think it's the 17th, um, that talks about these kinds of sustainable celebrations and how we can tread a little bit lighter on the earth and have a faith-filled and family and food-filled uh, time uh, during our holiday celebrations. And that's really all I have to say about that. You can download the Waste Toolkit for free off of our resource page. So I hope that you can find that useful. Thanks, Christina. We like free. <laughs> um, we're now going to watch a short video as we transition into our next section with Dan. Okay, so for my part of the presentation I'm, or workshop, I'm gonna talk about social media and then also some grants that we have available. So we have some really exciting things that have developed over the last year or more. One is called Voices of the Earth. It's a po podcast, um, which is uh, uh, hosted by us and it has uh, many different um, topics that are explored. So that's really cool. You can see that on our website. And then the bottom right picture is of our social media YouTube channel. Um, so one thing that happened with COVID is everything went virtual and then we recorded like everything. So we have a really diverse YouTube channel. Um, there's short videos, there's long videos, almost every single workshop that we've done um, in all of our different program areas are available on YouTube now. So you definitely want to jump over there and uh, check out our uh, YouTube channel, the podcast. And then also, I think on the next slide, we have our uh, Facebook group, which um, it's uh, 61 members strong right now, but we have a lot of really good information on there. So be sure to join our Facebook group. And then we also have Instagram that you can check out as well. Um, and our comms team does a great job with all those channels, maintaining them, keeping them up to date. Um, so it's really worth your while to go out and check those out. And then next slide. And then 
we also have some resources where you can host a movie night. Everything from from the ashes, kiss to ground, which is really great. Uh, before the flood, chasing coral. Uh, we basically can get you in touch with getting these movies, and we can also help possibly at times with the licensing um, uh, fees as well, because there are usually some licensing fees. Kiss to ground, you can actually get that without any licensing fees, but you have to ask for permission to show the movie. Uh, and it's a really great one about restorative agriculture, which is a really exciting uh, opportunity for us to take uh, CO2 out of the atmosphere and sequester it into the ground, just in the way that we do agricultural practices. And movies are a great way for people to get involved because it's a really low threshold. We all love movies. And these are all really highly produced, uh, really great movies that kind of inspire us and also help, help us to want to take action. Uh, and that's what our movie nights are all about. And then next. And then, of course, we want to talk about grants for your house of worship, because raise your hand if you like free money. Everybody raise your hand. I can't see you, but I'm sure you're raising your hand. Um, so we have a few different revenue sources available for you. Um, next slide. Um, so you can actually earn money by co-hosting a webinar. So you can earn between fifty and three hundred dollars by co-hosting a webinar, and webinar, and it's based on attendance. So the first uh, level is ten to nineteen people is fifty dollars, and then twenty and up is a hundred dollars, and then it goes up from there. Um, and that helps us, you know, educate more people, and it also gives your green team some money where you can do whatever you want with it. Um, you can get hats or you can buy, you know, things for your garden, you know, whatever you want to get is basically it's your money, do with it what you want. But it's a great way to get some maybe some seed money to do um, projects that you want to do. And then what's really cool, too, is that every event we do a $50 uh, raffle gift card. So everybody has a chance that attends our events to get a $50 raffle. And that's at any event that you have 10 or more people at. And then the energy webinars actually have some extra incentives um, financially if you um, host one of those. But the things that you can host, you can host racial healing circles, you can host energy workshops, you can do water webinars, um, basically any type of workshop that we have, you can co-host and then earn some uh, money by doing that as well. So that's exciting. Uh, next slide. Oh, and then uh, watch out for potential grants. Um, another grant that we have that we didn't have a slide for is actually a solar grant. Um, everybody's really excited and wants to do solar. Um, so we actually have usually every year or our grant cycles, we have two $10,000 grants for solar. Um, and it's a first come first serve basis. So as soon as you get a contract signed and you can show us, hey, we have a solar contract signed, um, then we give you $10,000, um, which is a really great opportunity to get, um, you know, part of your project paid for. Um, we have one this year that's close to being signed, so we at least have one more up for grabs. So if you're in the process of looking for solar, you know, that's a possibility for you to uh, get some money off of that right off the top. And then... Um, we had funding for equitable food access in the past. It was a $250,000 grant that we distributed to uh, our partners that were doing food, whether it was through uh, local organic gardens or they had food pantries or they're doing just anything in the time of COVID related to food and hunger issues. Um, we uh, supported them through a pass-through grant to give them money to support their efforts. And um, we're not for sure, but we hope in the future that we'll have something like that again. So um, stay tuned and look out for if we do have that again, uh, there's basically an application on our website to fill out. Um, and I believe usually we chunk it up into about $8,000, four to $8,000 at a time. Um, and then I also want to mention the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, or CJA, which was a huge win that Illinois passed. If you're not familiar with it, I recommend um, learning more about it. We have webinars every so often, and so do a lot of our partners. Um, it really puts Illinois on the path to 100% clean energy, electrifying our uh, vehicles in the state. 
and um, it has a lot of equitable provisions in it as well. And I mentioned this, um, and not to go into all the details of CJA, but there's going to be a lot of opportunities um, for doing expanded uh, renewable energy as well as energy efficiency. So uh, please be in touch with us as we will probably have more resources available for you um, as the programs that we already have will expand under CJA, which is really exciting. And I think that's it for me. And now we're going to pass it back to Veronica. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. And so there's a poll question here. Do you feel the resources we've shared would help you start or grow your environmental justice work at your house of worship? Uh, simple yes or no question. Please give us your response. Give us a sense of um, if you felt what we share today would help you directly your house of worship. Participating. Let's see what the results are. All right. So 92% said yes. 8% said no, not quite. Uh, feel free uh, if you are the no, not quite to um, be in touch. And we'd love to have a conversation with you to, to see um, what there is that you may need um, or may be looking for. And um, there may be more that we can share with you. With that, um, we want to wrap up by kind of reiterating the different ways that you can get involved. First is to start a green team um, in your house of worship. You know, those folks who um, care deeply about the environment so deeply that they um, already maybe are involved or really have been looking for ways to involve your, your people in this work. We'd love to work with you. Again, we have coaches that can help you get started and help your Green team grow, no pun intended, and um, help you grow and really be effective uh, in caring for the earth uh, where you are. Uh, try one of our toolkits or the curriculum. Again, our website is full of downloadable information and resources, toolkits that you can use to start um, programs right where you are. So feel free to go to our website and check out those, those resources. Invite your friends, invite your friends to check out our, our website, invite your friends to a movie night by hosting one, uh, invite your friends to a webinar. So host a webinar, invite your friends, um, help educate uh, people about um, everything from solar energy to the Clean Energy Job Act to um, having a garden, um, to Monarch Butterflies, um, anything that we offer, we can help you start host a webinar and uh, get people to come and get some resources for your house of worship. And then also donate. Um, we are a nonprofit organization and we welcome your donations for this important work in these days and time where we um, are really paying attention to climate change and all of the other impacts to our environment and to the earth. Check out our website, faithinplace.org slash take dash action. Uh, you can get more information as well as feel free to email any of your hosts for today, uh, myself, uh, Isioma or Dan. Um, I believe Caesar also dropped his email in the chat. Uh, seriously important to get our young people. As a matter of fact, many of our young people are leading in these areas and could uh, possibly even lead a green team, certainly can be part of our Eco Ambassador Program. So please engage your young people. I think they will find it invigorating uh, and will be leaders in these spaces. Thank you again for coming. Uh, feel free to connect with us, faithinplace.org. Um, we are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. We're in all of these different social media um, programs or uh, apps, if you will, and we look forward to connecting with you. With that, we want to open up for Q&A, and we also have several other staff on. If you're staff of Faith in Place, please wave so folks can see you. Awesome. Thank you. Any Q&A, any questions, feel free to maybe raise your hand. And we would love to answer your questions. 
I see one hand, David Gray. Yeah, hi. Um, so I was one of the um, not quite people and it's because the church I attend rents its space in a building. And we have lots of churches now that are renting space in buildings that they don't own. And so I was sort of wondering what, um, you know, how are you developing thoughts to help those churches um, sort of cajole their, their owners to, to be more green? Awesome, great question. Um, well, first, if we just talk about the, the organization itself, the church, the house of worship, regardless of the space they're in, their own practices, they could be considering a green team to look at, um, you know, their use of energy, even while they're in that space, they could look at, do they recycle bulletins, if you will, you know, there's things they can do as far as improving upon their own practices. Uh, and but then certainly possibly engaging um, the owners of that space. Do we have any coaches who have a green team that has that situation where they're in a space they are renting? We've got several coaches on. Candace, you wanna? Good evening. So yes, I do have a green team um, that does rent a space and uh, to reiterate what Reverend Veronica said was they do um, are just assessing their practices around waste and how much plastic they use. If they have um, coffee before and after service, are they using sustainable and renewable products? Um, how do they dispose of their waste? Um, just different things around that. So just making sure that everyone that is a member of that church has an agreement and um, a collective vision of how they want to be sustainable and worship together, so. And I would add as well, the, the education component and the advocacy component really is independent of, of the, the building itself. And so we'd love to engage um, those houses of worship. Thank you, Saba. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you very much for this information session. I uh, really appreciate it. I had, I think it's like two questions. One is um, all of these various programs that you have, um, is there a geographical boundary as to uh, who can participate in them? So currently we are an Illinois based organization. So anywhere in Illinois, uh, anywhere in Illinois. Okay. Absolutely. So it's not just city of Chicago, it's anywhere in Illinois. Um, and then my other question, which is not too different, but slightly different from um, David's, um, is, uh, is are your, uh, like the green team, for example, is it only to create good practices in places of worship or is it also for creating, assisting to create good practices um, it, within a faith community, not, not like in their own homes or in their own workplaces or whatever? Um, because, you know, as you know very well, the Baha'i community doesn't have a uh, specific location uh, in uh, Chicago, but um, we obviously have a community and I think getting better green education is always valuable and important. And I think I like to start thinking of who might be interested in engaging in this, but I wanted to know whether the green teams mm, could be not based on trying to create practices in a building. Exactly, exactly. I, I think um, certainly there is some interest in that faith community, what they can do, but absolutely we want to educate citizens in general. And the house of worship currently is just the vehicle to also reach those who are part of that, but that they are considering their own usage, their own knowledge, um, you know, every, including, um, you know, uh, when an election season comes around, you know, thinking about what candidates represent and so forth. Um, if there's any other green team coaches that wanna share, I see a few on. But absolutely, it is um, using the houses of worship, but also connecting with the individual citizens. Isioma? Yeah, Reverend Brock, I was gonna say, um, I think it's, it's useful to have an organization like Faith in Place working with houses of worship because we do offer that uh, personal 
program um, kind of individual thing where we come in and say, you know, um, these are the things that you can be doing inside of your home right now to make changes. Um, or, for example, earlier I mentioned hourly pricing and peak time saving. That is an individual decision to make. So we do things like that with our programming, which is really, uh, really uh, what makes it so special, having those green team coaches. Thank you. Thank you. And I would add too, like a lot of our programs start with the house of worship building, but it's meant to be an inspiration really to your members. Because if you add up the positive, healthy footprint that your members can create in their communities, that's really where it's at. So often we'll start with focusing on the building because like in a building, you can be that really positive example, you know, connecting it. We're doing this because it's a, a faithful practice and then to inspire um, the people in your uh, congregations to to basically go forth and do the same. That's really where we're at. And so if you don't have a specific building, you know, basically we would focus on the education for your members and what they can do. And that's really where the exciting change happens is when people um, start making changes in their personal lives. And then when we also come together and do work on advocacy together to work on the system as well. Thank you. And what's your question is done for me, Saba, is make sure that in the future that we make that very clear, because that is really just part of part of who we are. And it's in, very intentional that we do that. Uh, I see Susan's question and full disclosure, Susan is a member of my church. Um, and so she said, could we get a green roof installed at High Park Union Church in our standing water problem area? We will certainly talk about it, Susan. <laughs> We will certainly talk about it. Um, you know, there's there are a lot of old church buildings across and, and other houses of worship across uh, the world, really, um, that are dealing with a lot of issues. We are in that realm as well. And, and Susan is an architect in our congregation. Um, and so she's always thinking about those things. Thanks, Susan. We will we will talk <laughs> for sure. Christina. Christina mentioned uh, rain gardens um, are a potential solution. Absolutely, rain garden. Christine, will you want to say more? No, not really. I was just looking up, though. I know that um, Chicago's Trinity UCC has a green roof. I'm trying to find you a article to link on that as well. I'll drop it in the chat. Okay. But, but seriously, great, great idea and great thoughts. There are um, solutions that are part of green technology that many building owners, whether it's a house of worship or any other building have not thought about in the past that they really need to begin to consider uh, environmentally um, safe, if you will, or environmentally sound solutions to some of these problems that we've had. So thank you, Christina. Susan, you're copy that link. Awesome. Any other questions? I'll, I'll just quickly mention the power of the green team connection. So uh, Trinity UCC is a longtime uh, green team of Faith and Places. Reverend Moss is the chair of our action fund board. Uh, so this is how the connection works, right? So you have a green team that does amazing things and you can go take a field trip and see what they're doing and collaborate with them and see how it worked for them and you know maybe bring a similar program to your uh, house of worship. So that's kind of, again, you know why green teams are so cool so that we can all work together to build healthier communities in every context uh, of Illinois. Thank you. With that, I think that is all of our questions, unless there are others. Again, please feel free to reach out. We are here to serve you, to engage with you and those you know um, who are part of your houses of worship or family, um, friends, um, to really come to understand what is happening uh, in the area of environmental justice, environmental racism, climate change, all of that, we engage it on a daily basis. We welcome you as a partner um, to help educate you and those who you are connected to, to help engage you in environmental work and environmental justice and even fun, right? nature walks and building gardens and so forth. Um, there's a lot to do in this area. We're excited to be 
involved in it and we welcome you to participate with us. And with that, thank you for coming. This session was recorded. I believe a link will be sent out in the near future and you can share it. And we look forward to remaining in touch. Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming. Good night. <laughs>